So as the Occupational Safety Manager, I'm uh, responsible for all OSHA violations and annual safety and facility inspections done to every building and unit that actually occupies uh, with airmen of the command. After my retirement as a Marine, I was looking for something uh, different to do as a career and this one became available uh, after I was hired as a travel clerk over in the OG. Uh, this position came open uh, as a specialist initially and then I worked my way up into the position as manager once the previous manager retired. So I did several things uh, safety related in the Marine Corps related to uh, weapon safety of course a lot of that and also unit safety and vehicle safety with young marines. I also did additionally the OSHA 10 hour course for general industry prior to coming into this job so I had a little bit of general knowledge. Uh, generally since we've got 24 separate units on the base we'll do our annual inspections which are required by AFI. Uh, we'll need to do those across the year so we generally do one to two per month uh, that's facility and the program of safety uh, also. Uh, that's the majority of our day. Also, we do mishaps, uh, injuries, uh, things like that when they're reported to us and we perform a trend analysis for the commander based on the input from those mishaps. Okay. Uh, the main thing that we provide is mishap prevention uh, for the commander to give him uh, an analysis of trends to show him where he could apply uh, pressure or influence to reduce future mishaps uh, across his command. Uh, each unit is assigned per AFI a unit safety representative which receives training in our office from myself or the safety specialist to tell them what their duties are when they're performing at the unit. Basically there are eyes and ears when we go out to the units for safety inspections. We'll liaison with them when we go to the inspections and then they will walk us around their facilities and we'll try to observe any uh, facility discrepancies and we'll add them as findings to the reports. So the unit safety rep is a real key person in this whole command group. That's that individual at the unit who's watching his unit day to day for these kind of findings and discrepancies. Uh, I would offer, uh, and I have this in my office, that the AFI regulations for safety are written in the blood of our airmen. So every time, as you uh, know as an Air Force person, that uh, something happens, we try to be a little bit more proactive in not letting it happen again. So a lot of times it requires regulation and guidance to everyone not to do certain things. That's how we implement it. Uh, historically, we uh, have had a lot of it come through mishaps, but a lot of it comes through the trend analysis. So if you can do the analysis up front, you can prevent those mishaps from happening and provide guidance before the actual accident. I was 19, I grew up in Worcester, Mass here, and uh, all of about 5'10", 119 pounds. Did a semester of college, decided didn't want to do college anymore, and I walked into a recruiting office. Uh, so after receiving a waiver for not being heavy enough, they shipped me to boot camp, and uh, 30 years later, to paraphrase, here I am, 6'2", 210, uh, Marine Corps made a man out of me. Initially, uh, I was uh, what we call a direct shipper, so I enlisted on the 9th of January and shipped to boot camp three weeks later uh, at Paris Island. And uh, 13 weeks of training, toughest thing I've ever done in my life, mentally, physically, and otherwise, uh, just because of the actual culture shock. Uh, you go down there, you used to being just a young American boy, you know, living life, it's all good. Next thing you know, you're at the bottom of the ladder trying to climb your way up to prove your value to the Marine Corps. And guys usually join the Marine Corps for two reasons, according to you know, my thought process. They either join because they want to prove something to themselves or they want to prove something to somebody else. And mine was a combination of the two. I wanted to make sure that you know, I had what it takes. My dad was in the Army before, so of course I wanted to do better than my dad, so you know, I'm going to be a Marine. And that's how it turned out for me. Uh, I graduated from boot camp and then immediately went on to the School of Infantry uh, at that point to be an infantryman. Uh, weeks of training later, I shipped out to my first unit to uh, 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines in California. And I did a few deployments with them. Then throughout the whole career, deployment here, deployment there, different unit, uh, just a myriad of different experiences and you could even call them adventures. Uh, nine deployments over a 30-year career, 
uh, to work. Some to good places, some to bad places. Uh, a few combat deployments in there, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and so forth. Uh, and then I wrapped it up by actually retiring as the sergeant major for the recruiting station here in Springfield, where I originally enlisted, which is kind of full circle, full circle. pretty interesting. Yeah. Actually, back in the 1900s, uh, grandfather was in the Army, my father was in the Army, then my brother joined the Marines, I joined the Marines, uh, and then both of my sons joined the Marines. Uh, the older boy uh, actually went to Annapolis. He's an electrical engineering uh, major. Actually received the Commandant of the Marine Corps Award for Electrical Engineering uh, when he graduated that year for doing a program uh, on IEDs and how to uh, protect against them. Uh, so his name's on a bronze plaque at the Naval Academy. We're pretty proud of that. He elected Marine option, of course, because you know he still wanted me to talk to him. We didn't want him to go Navy option. Uh, so he became a Marine helicopter pilot. Uh, did eight years in the Marine Corps, got out, and now he is a member of the Air National Guard in Hawaii uh, as a civil engineer. That's my oldest son. The younger boy, Rob, is uh, graduated from high school in Hawaii. Three days later, we moved here to Massachusetts. I dragged him with us. Uh, he did get into his college of first choice, so I then took him down to the recruiting station where I was the sergeant major and enlisted him. Uh, he joined the reserves. We got him back here. He was a combat engineer uh, on the base here uh, at the Marine unit for 10 years as a combat engineer and literally got promoted out of a job. He got promoted to E6. They had no more billets for combat engineers in that grade. So he asked me what I thought. I said, uh, have you ever thought about uh, explosive ordnance disposal? I know some guys down at the EOD shop on the base. Uh, and so what we did is I took him over there and they were happy to see him. Uh, long story short, he graduated from EOD school as a staff sergeant. He's now in the Air Force Reserve here at Westover. Uh, as I pointed out the fact to both of my sons that uh, now they're both in the Air National Guard and Air Force after having been Marines before, they both acknowledged that and said, yeah, Deb, but you started it. You worked for the Air Force and you were a Marine, so fair enough. I'll give them that.